Well, hello there and welcome to Travels with Geordie. If this is your first visit, my name is Peter Knowles and I live on this classic wooden motor cruiser here in Victoria, British Columbia, all the while fixing it up for some pretty ambitious cruising someday. If that's the sort of thing you might find interesting, please consider sticking around and subscribing. I'd love to have you. Well, despite the weather, I'm getting down to the wire for getting a windlass on this boat. So rain or shine, and I only have a few days left, we got to get this thing so we can anchor because that's what I'm going to have to do straight time in four days. I'll begin with determining a rough idea of a patch for this. I'm going to say something in the 18 by, well it's got to fit in here, so 18 by 16. Uh, that will cover this and give me enough structure through to some more solid wood that I can bolt the new windlass right down on here. Because the deck is cambered, this of course will rock. But instead of carving the bottom out of my board here, I'm actually just gonna cut a little bit of the deck because of course the deck is going to be garbage soon. So that's pretty easy to do. Okay, as ugly as this is, we're gonna have to consider this a repair at sea. <sighs>
And now to wire this poor beast up. Well, if we look up in this lovely corner here, here is the old relays and switches for the old windlass. And I want this all gone. And even more so, I am not going to reinstall it back there. I'm going to reinstall the new uh, relay right up here somewhere, which is technically in the forward head, but I will find a way to build it into a locker someday into the future because I am never again going to crawl through there to fix anything electrical, I, I hope. All right, let's do some disassembly. Ugh. Lovely. So I don't know if you can see these, but this is the sort of 200 amp connections that uh, <laughs> I've been dealing with for the last little while. All right, so we're gonna go right about here. To be fair, I'm not really sure why when I wired this up on Poem, I put a black and a red wire because it's a reversible motor. The polarity changes every time you use it. All right, let's connect these up. Okay, so attached to the motor, now we can figure out where to put the relay, which will be about here somewhere. And uh, I think I'll just pre-attach them because they're very, very stiff wires. That will allow me to uh, attach the relay more comfortably. All right, let's see where this just sort of feels good. Right about there, I'd say. Okay, so here's my main feed wires uh, power for the windlass. Um, <laughs> ironically, a little bit undersized where these ones are significantly oversized. However, I don't know the polarity, so I'm gonna use my little test light here to determine the polarity. Now, ironically, uh, I now know that this terminal is positive uh, because the light went red. <laughs> but strangely enough, on this particular meter, uh, on this particular test lamp, uh, reverse polarity is green. I would have thought that would be positive polarity, but I'm not going to get wound up about that. I happen to know that that is positive. My handy dandy lug crimper. Love this thing. Oh, yeah. Very nice. Okay. And to manage the signal wires, I'm going to use this nice little terminal strip here, about there. Okay. All right, so I've made up some cables to run through to the switches, which are the foot switches to operate the windlass, which are just beyond this bulkhead right there. Not easy to get to, so I'm now going to try to wire them up without dropping any of the screws in the belch. Oh boy. Okay. okay, there was no way I was going to be able to get those connections done <sighs> reaching around into the chain locker. So I went out in the foredeck and I released the switches and let them fall down. And I'm glad I did because this one uh, was... <laughs> Hello, Koho. This one is split and is terminally uh, finished, most likely from water getting into it and freezing. Uh, the other one is new. I replaced it last year, but it's cheapy. So what I do have is the brand new beautiful ones. Uh, that came with the windlass that I removed from Poem uh, thinking I might use them, but anyway, so I'm going to install these um, on the foredeck in an area where I'm going to be replacing the foredeck anyway because of all that rot for those of you who've been watching along. The bottom line is I got to get this done in the next hour or two because I need to leave the marina tomorrow. So basically, I'll go there and there. Again, this whole section of deck is going to be replaced next year, or maybe this year.
Okay, I'm gonna let the butyl settle a little bit in here because I don't want to over tighten these because it distorts this ring because it's actually quite thin, much too thin really. And that means it won't be a good seal against this rubber. Actually, these switches are not all that good. Okay, now we're back in business. All right, so now, I just have to take a positive jumper from the positive terminal on here and up to feed the positive side of these two switches which will come back on return on the yellow to the actual relay. And the positive. Now, I should say this is not proper procedure. You see I made this little pigtail to take um, positive 12 volt power off the uh, main feed to the windlass breaker for the um, switches in the solenoid. And that is not a proper procedure because the main wires for the windlass are actually on a 200 amp circuit breaker, which is much too large circuit protection for these tiny wires and the tiny loads that these have to be on. So in time, especially when I wire up the, um, the uh, windlass controls at the helm in the next month or so, I'll have to put a dedicated circuit for these right back from the panel. Actually, I'm gonna turn this around. And now, Two positive leads up here. And of course it's pouring rain again, as it always seems to these days. Okay, let's tighten these wires a bit. And uh, fire up the breaker to make sure that nothing goes funny. And uh, if that doesn't cause any excitement, let's go upstairs and test it in the rain. All right. No sparks or excitement from the breaker. Let's go on up and play with it. And let's see what we think of this. Now, so far I have no idea which way is up or down. Okay, so I have the tiniest bit of slack. So hopefully if it goes in the wrong direction at first, it won't be the end of the world. That's up and that's down. How about that? Woohoo! Oh, let's tighten the clutch. Next project is to wire this shackle. All right then, it's time to get back to work in the cockpit. We have some fabulous weather and that is such a joy. Now uh, those thwarts are just sitting in the sun, just take the last little bit of uh, curl out of them and we're gonna get everything oiled up today. The bench is put away, folded up. Um, I won't have it out again until I am at some cruising destination where I'm gonna be able to do some work. I just wanna get these thwarts put back in place. So so bad. Okay, again we have a little water staining on here from having gotten wet. And off we go. Starting with the end grain. is so lovely. Okay. Beauty. Perfect. The privilege of living in the inner harbor of Victoria as well. There's always something happening at the legislature. Today it's a happy thing.
All right then, well, I am really, really pleased. Got it all oiled, and in fact, I've given it its first rub down, which basically just means taking a cotton cloth and rubbing the oil in a little bit to keep it from getting too gloopy. I have to admit, I did uh, the bulkhead here in a bit of a hurry a couple of weeks ago, and I let it stay on kind of sticky, so that's gonna need a little attention uh, to look absolutely beautiful. So it's, it's close. We've got all the hard work done. Uh, I did actually just put a little bit of oil on here too, just to see how it would um, brighten up the uh, oil that's been on there for a couple of weeks now. So there's lots still to do here, but we've come a long way, looking a lot better. I'm hoping over the next week or so, I'll be able to refinish the bulkhead and uh, finally get this all uniform and eventually get some varnish in here and uh, refinish also the combing and just get the whole cockpit together we finish the ladder paint the sole oh yeah I can't wait well hello there and welcome to the travels with Jordy beer of the week coming to you this week from a secret location you'll find out all about very very shortly can you hear extra episode okay this week's beer let's get right to it this was a gift um, from uh, a fine couple that came to visit me John and Carolyn and it's from Bench Brewery in Ontario and it's the Short Hills Hazy IPA and anyone who knows me knows I love a hazy IPA ah uh, well yes it's pouring rain and it's a bit cool but I'm on anchor in one of my favorite places secret places and uh, I'm here feeling very confident and very happy uh, to be out and about and beginning my summer cruising Ooh, have I said too much Enough to say, I'm very, very, very pleased with the windlass, the chain, and the anchor. Gives me tremendous confidence to be here tonight because actually the wind is gonna come up in a bit. Cheers. Uh, the uh, Short Hills Hazy from Bench Brewery in Ontario. Oh my gosh, yes. <laughs> Whew. Absolutely love it. Not as hazy as some hazies, but the Brits amongst you will will um, will maybe tolerate it as not quite so hazy, but it is very very yummy. Mmm, splendid. Okay, uh, not much to talk about this week. Uh, we have a winner. Last week's winner for Travels with Jordy T-shirt is Two Dogs Night. So Two Dogs Night, congratulations, and get a hold of me. We'll make sure you get your T-shirt. Now, as I said before, getting a hold of me. Uh, by far the simplest way to do that is to email me at swag at travelswithjordy.com. Uh, Facebook and Instagram and other kinds of places, uh, I don't check as often. Uh, so um, if you could possibly just send me off an email at swag, S-W-A-G, at travelswithjordy.com. And uh, with no new uh, supporters in the last week, we're going to jump straight to the word. And as I may have alluded... The word this week is confidence. I feel so confident now having this beautiful new windlass chain and anchor. Again, thank you, Lloyd. It's thanks to you that I have this. And it is so nice to know that I can just wind that anchor up and down safely because that old windlass had pretty much had it. So, confidence, word of the week. See you in a few days. Cheers. I love this. I just love this. I don't even mind the rain. Can't possibly leave town without bagels. Okay, I'm pretty much ready to go. Got the mahogany, got the bagels.